I think I better throw this out. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get all the red ink out of it. Hmm? Yeah, that was uh, really quite a good idea, Gunther. I'm surprised I didn't think of it myself. <laughs> well, if you're going to make somebody think that you killed somebody, you got to have a little blood someplace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect thing. It's just that we need to make our little uh, joke work. Yeah, this, uh, this friend of mine, uh, he works in Hollywood as a stuntman. He showed me uh, how it works. They use it all the time in the Westerns. Look, see? You have this little bag taped right to my waist full of red ink, but nothing happens until you squeeze it. And then all of a sudden, bang, I'm shot in the stomach. <laughs> and we're really going to have a little bang, too, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, except Wiley, uh, he won't know that the real bullets are right here, and his gun is loaded with blanks. And he won't know this is not real blood when he sees it. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're really enjoying this project, Gunther. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm enjoying, Mr. Whitney. I'm thinking about that $500,000 that you promised me. I'm thinking about that tropical island I'm going to. Miles and miles of pink-white beaches, incredibly blue skies, and beautiful girls with nothing more but suntan zone. <laughs> now you sound like a travel folder. Uh, my life is going to be a travel folder, Mr. Whitney. Now, about that money. Yeah, yeah. As I told you, I'm going to the bank first thing tomorrow. I'll get the money out of the bank, and uh, I think we should move at our first available opportunity. I'm thinking about moving tonight. What? Yeah. Wiley's always hanging around late at the studio. I thought I might drive by and see what's happening. The sooner the better, right? Yeah, sooner the better. What? Uh, I was just uh, telling Gunther that uh, you ought to take care of that toothache sooner the better. Uh, that's right, Mr. Whitney. I think maybe I ought to see a dentist tonight. Mm. Anyway, I have good news. Geraldine said she feels better and she wants to come to dinner. Oh, great. Well, I'll go change. Uh, why don't you tell Chrissy? Oh, that's just what I was going to do. Mm. Also, I think it would be a good time to ask her if she wants to live with us. Oh, yeah, that is a good idea. Uh, you better take care of that tooth, Gunther. You don't want it to get infected or something. Mm -hmm. That's right, Mr. Whitney. If you got something that's bothering you, you should take care of it right away, don't you think? promise to show me your notes. Oh, well, sure, that's the deal. You want to see what my handwriting was like back then? Stay going. <laughs> I thought doctors were only illegible when they wrote prescriptions. <laughs> Jody, have you found anything interesting? I think the word is depressing. Depressing? What is it? Well, it's just a box full of things I've been saving. Some dance souvenirs. <laughs> want to see something? I even saved my first pair of dancing slippers. Wow. It looks like you wore them to a frazzle. Yeah. Well, I guess I can add to the collection again by putting my newest slippers in the box. Oh, Jody, now don't say such things. You're not hanging up your shoes forever. You're just leaving one job. Sure, I guess so. Oh, so that's why your chin's been on the carpet all evening. You're thinking about the opening. Now, listen, you had us convinced that you didn't have any regrets about that, remember? No, it's not regret I feel. I mean, I know I did the right thing. I just can't help feeling sad about a lost opportunity, can I? No, you have every right to feel sad. Yeah, well, what she does not have the right to do is to dump her whole career into a souvenir box. You know what you ought to be doing? You ought to be working even harder for when the next opportunity comes along. Big Brother has spoken. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. I don't mean to preach. I don't mean to preach. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Kavanaugh residence until tomorrow. <laughs> yes, Gavin, she's right here tomorrow. For you. Gavin, hi. Hi, how's the packing going? Oh, it's about finished. Where are you? Are you here? No, I'm at Sid's. I had a bite to eat with Calvin, but he had to rush out. And I had to eat my dessert all by myself. Oh, you poor baby. 
Well, make sure it's something gooey and delicious so you won't mind as much. Well, it wouldn't have to eat dessert if you were to. Mm -hmm. You sure there isn't any chance that we can see each other tonight? I wish there was, but, um, well, I promised Marvin to call our babysit for Adam so they could go out to dinner. Jody, you didn't tell me you had a date with Gavin. No, I didn't. Gavin, I'm sorry. You know how it is. I mean, tonight's the last night in the house, and the place is a mess, and I think Miles and Nicole should get out for a while. Gavin, hold on for a second. Well, Personally, I think that Jody is the one who needs the company tonight. Now, is there any chance of a last-minute babysitter? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. I talked to Mrs. Goodman's niece this morning, and she said she'd be available anytime. No, no, you don't have to do that. It isn't fair. Jody, you tell Gavin that you will meet him. All right. Gavin? Mm. They said that they are... Twisting my arm. We are twisting your arm, Gavin. And they didn't have to twist too hard. <laughs> Good. Can you meet me at the studio? Sure. I'll see you in a little while. Bye bye. Excuse me, I have to get ready. <laughs> I'll call the babysitter. <laughs> You uh, change your mind about dessert? Yeah. What have you got that's gooey and delicious? <laughs> well, your mood has certainly improved since Calvin left. Hey, uh, what was all that about, anyway? What was what all about? That little game of trivia I played with your friend when he got off the phone. He wanted to know if I knew the name of the second Beatles film. <laughs> what a bizarre question. Did you give me an answer? Yeah, sure. It was hell. I need some. <laughs> anyway, as soon as I told him, he dashed out of the place like it was on fire. Don't chive me, lady. I know you got money. You got lots of money, and I need some of it fast. Marcus, you're an ingrate. I took your case for almost no fee at all, and I stuck my neck out to get that bail bond for you. And now you tell me that you're going to jump bail and stick me for the money? It's better than me getting stuck in jail. And you have the nerve to come here and ask me for more money? I think I can get away. I'd ask my old lady for the money, but like you said, she's dead broke. And you'll break her heart if you do this. Don't talk to me about breaking no hearts. I'm going to break some heads if you don't give me some cash. Well, where am I going to get it? Here's my purse. Here. Take it. Take everything that's in it. And even if I had money in the bank, which I don't, they're all closed at night, in case you didn't know. You got as much as the old lady. You better come up with another way. And right now, because I'm not fooling around. Now, you give me some money. I'll kill you. You hear me? I said I'd kill you. Marcus, it doesn't pay to get excited. I'm not excited, lady. I just want you to know that I mean business. Do you think of something, huh? Like what? What's in this desk? There's nothing in here but some, some old papers, some paper clips, some candy. Open stuff. it. Let's see. Yeah, there's nothing in there. What about those other drawers? Open them. nothing in there either. All right, police officer, hold it. Come on, now, just uh, put that knife down. Please. You put the gun down. Do you hear me, cop? I said drop the gun. All right, we'll make a deal. I'll put the gun down. You put the knife down. And we'll talk about it nice and calm, all right? Don't put it down, cop. I told you to drop it on the floor. Calvin, please. Yeah, okay, okay. Anything you say, here you go. Now, how's that, huh? All right, now, somebody wants to tell me what's going on here? He's my client. Your client? Uh-huh. What's the matter, Sonny? Can't you afford the fee? You better stop calling me Sonny. Your lady friend's gonna get hurt. Okay, just take it easy. There's no need for anybody to get hurt. I mean, uh, you two are having some sort of legal dispute. I can, uh... Negotiated with you, huh? Why don't you just put that thing down and uh, we can talk? He doesn't want to talk, Calvin. He wants money. Is he really a cop? Yeah, you uh, you want to see my badge? It's uh, right here in my wallet with my money. Talk to me. Here it is. Requesting assistance on an 800 River Avenue, professional.
National Building, Suite 1500. No, all I need is one patrolman in a car. That's right. Well, you all right? <laughs> Thanks, and thank you for getting my message. Oh, yeah, that was pretty clever of you. Second Beatles movie. It's a good thing there was a Beatles fan there, or I didn't know the name of it. Is this, uh, is this punk really a client of yours? Yeah. I raised his bail, and I guess he thought I was one of those millionaire lawyers. So you go out of your way to help him, and this is how he repays you, huh? Still feeling compassionate? Come on, come on, it's over, it's over, it's all right. I can't believe that one nut fudge Sunday could make anybody look so happy. Or is it something else? Uh, like uh, maybe something to do with that phone call you made? Oh, I know. You're pretty shrewd, sir. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just found out I was going to see Jody Will later. I see. Uh, listen, you mind if I sit down a minute? There's nobody screaming for service. You're right, we You want some? Oh, you kid. I gained five pounds just making one of those things. Gavin. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about Bobby. Yeah, where is Bobby, man? I thought she was off on Saturdays. Well, she called in sick this afternoon. Listen, Gavin, um, I guess you know by now that Bobby has got kind of a schoolgirl crush on you. Only she, uh, she ain't exactly a schoolgirl. Oh, come on, Sid. You know there's nothing going on there. Well, maybe not for you, but the way she's walking around here in a daze, I... Look, I try to kid her out of it, but nothing works. You said I didn't encourage her. I mean, I... I did invite her over to the studio just to watch some of the dance rehearsals, but that was just being friendly. I didn't, I didn't mean to encourage her or... Uh... Look, the way Bobby feels, if you even ask her for a glass of water, she's going to think you're proposing marriage. Yeah, but she knows about me and Jody. She's seen us together. Yeah, yeah, sure. And she has seen Jody and Kelly McGrath sitting right here where we're sitting now. Yeah, but that was over a long time ago. Look. Bobby is really a good kid. She's just never had a decent break in her whole life. Now, I know it's not your fault. Just the same, it's going to be up to you to let her down easy. All I'm suggesting is that you do it as easy as possible. Can you do that? Well, sure, sir. I'll try. Good. I think I better give her a call and see how she's feeling. It's Sid. Oh, hi, Sid. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. We're doing all right without you. It's a slow night. How are you feeling? Oh, I feel a little better. I just need a good night's sleep. Yeah, well, listen, you take care of yourself, and uh, if you don't feel well tomorrow, well, you can take another day off. Oh, Sid, uh, I'm not coming in tomorrow. Well, that's okay. Look, I'd rather have you healthy tomorrow. No, I mean, I'm not coming in tomorrow or any other day. I'm sorry, but um, I'm leaving. I, I can't work at the tavern anymore. Why not? Hey, I thought you were happy here. Oh, I was. I mean, you've been terrific, and so is a April. Well, is it because April's gone? I mean, is that it? No, no. It has nothing to do with that. Um, it, it's just something personal. I, I really can't talk about it. Well, look, kid, you never, never minded talking to me about personal things before. Yeah, I know, but I can't this time. I just can't. And I can't go back there. Uh-oh. Gavin's picture's gone.
Just don't overdo it, Jody. I appreciate your concern, Scarlett, but I really feel much better. Would you like some wine now, Mrs. Saxon? No, thank you, Chrissy. I'm sure one sip would put me on the floor. <laughs> Actually, you're not missing all that much, Geraldine. I haven't had a chance to do much with the wine cellar. Oh, I remember the old wine cellar. They say it was the finest in Monticello. <laughs> oh, poor Gordon. It took him years to stock that cellar. And then his doctors forbade him to drink. <laughs> Life is full of ironies. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you say. This house is as much yours as it is ours. Oh, that's nonsense, my dear. Of course this is your house. And I intend to leave you in peace just as soon as I regain my strength. <clears throat> um, Raymond? Yes, uh, Geraldine, we were going to ask you earlier, but uh, we had appointments. Skyler and I want to know if you would like to live with us. Permanently. You can't be serious. We are. It would be wonderful for all of us. Except maybe you, because now you'll have to put up with two spoiled children. <laughs> Actually, Geraldine, it would be very kind of you to accept our offer. Oh, Skyler, that's ridiculous. I couldn't possibly. Oh, when I said it would be a blessing to have you with us, it would particularly be a blessing for Raven. She's here alone so much with me gone. And, uh, well, you might act as a maternal instinct or a type that would keep her from, I don't know, traveling off into outer space or something. <laughs> I am I'm very touched by your offer, but I... Oh, please say you will, or, or at least say you'll think about it. Of course. It's, I'll think about it. It's the least I can do. Well, thank you, Charlie. We'd appreciate that. I know you're going to say yes. I know you will. And I think that in order to celebrate, we should have something a little better than this wine. Chrissy, would you have Gunther bring a bottle of champagne? Oh, Gunther isn't here, Mrs. Whitney. That's right. He went to the dentist, didn't he? Not even locked. Gap. Unexpected pleasure. Not for me, it isn't. I asked you what you were doing here, Gunther. Now, 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 don't get excited, Miss Travis. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. I just dropped by to have a word or two with Mr. Wiley. Is he here? No, no, but he'll be here any second. Oh, well, then I'll wait if you don't mind. You can wait outside if you don't mind. I'd rather not have your company, and I think you know why. Now, listen, Miss Travis, this is my lucky day. See, I was hoping that uh, we could have a couple of minutes alone together to talk about that little misunderstanding at the Whitney house. I didn't misunderstand anything. Now get out! Well, can't you say please? Please. Good. You see, I'm really sorry about what happened. And about that business in the car. I think you misunderstood me there, too. And, uh, well, you see, I was just having, uh, being friendly, and Mr. Whitney, he likes for me to be friendly with his employees, and me. Uh, I sure love to be friendly with cute little ladies. All right, Gunther. Um, I accept your apology. Satisfied? Now you can prove how sorry you are by leaving me alone. No, I didn't come here to bother you, Miss Travis. I came here to bother your boyfriend. What? What do you mean? Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey, look, you know, you look real cute in that outfit. You know, I'm really sorry that you're not going to be dancing for Mr. Whitney anymore. I was really looking forward to watching you dance in those cute little tights. But uh, that's not a bad outfit there. Say, what kind of material... Didn't you hear what I said? I said Gavin is going to be here any second. And if he finds you here, there's just going to be trouble. <laughs> Oh, I like trouble, Miss Travis. You see, trouble and fun mean the same thing to me. Now, about that material... Get away from me! <laughs> Boy, you're still just as unfriendly as ever, aren't you, Miss Travis? Oh, I know what it is. You think somebody's gonna come along and interrupt us. Is that it? You think somebody's gonna come walking in here and interrupt our little fun? Or maybe I should say trouble? <laughs> Now, 
Dad should take care of the interruptions. Now let's take care of the fun. 